Today, we're talking about attitudes of flight, how your plane is oriented relative to the horizon. If you look outside, you can see the cockpit is just about four inches below the horizon line. We're flying straight with a decent rate of speed. This is the cruise attitude. Let's see how it reads on your instruments. Take a look at the attitude indicator. As the name implies, it shows your current attitude. The white line is the horizon, with the sky above and the ground below. That orange element in the middle, aligned with the horizon, that's your plane. Just like we saw outside, our current attitude reads pretty much straight and level. Okay, now let's see how much power the engine's generating. Check your tachometer. Looks like we're pushing around 2300 revolutions per minute. Combined, attitude and engine RPMs translate to aircraft performance. Which leads us to your airspeed indicator. Now, last but not least, check your altimeter. To figure out your altitude, you always want to read the small needle first. That's how many thousands of feet up you are. Then on to the big needle for the hundreds. With our current attitude and power output, we're holding a speed of 90 knots and a stable altitude of 6,000 feet. But that's about to change. Take the stick when you're ready. Pull back slightly on the yoke to raise the nose just above the horizon line. About two inches. Make sure you don't pitch up too much, or the angle will be too steep to create lift. And without enough lift, we'll stall. All right, go full throttle and start climbing. Welcome to the climb attitude. See how it shows up on your attitude indicator and tachometer? According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed even at full throttle, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Okay, before we go on, let's get back to a cruise attitude. Ease up on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. Nice job. We're now set up with the same attitude and power we had at the top of our lesson. Next up is the descent attitude. Start by reducing your RPMs to 1800. Then drop the plane's nose a bit further below the horizon. With the nose down attitude, our altitude is decreasing while our speed is picking up. Why don't you get us back to a cruise attitude and we'll hit the last part of our lesson. There we go. Now that we know how to cruise, climb and descend, let's talk about the turn attitude. Gently pull the yoke left or right to start rolling the plane. If you take a look outside, you can see how our attitudes changed, but you can also check your instruments for the details. As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. At the top of your attitude indicator, there's a series of notches representing 10 degrees each. Use them to control your roll. Notice the more you turn, the more you need to pull back on the yoke to maintain altitude. When you're rolling out, you'll need to do the opposite. Roll and push at the same time. The more you know about the main attitudes of flight, the closer you get to that pilot state of mind. So keep practicing, and whenever you're done, pass me the controls. Thanks. 
I've got control now. Well done.